Get out my house. I kill you. I'll bring you to hey, Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 hilariously awful movie fights. Okay. Everybody can help us now. For this list, we'll be ranking the movie fight scenes that were so bad, they're almost good. Have you seen any or all of these films? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Shadow Boxing Ator the Fighting Eagle Ator the Fighting Eagle was the first installment of four, count them, four Italian Conan the Barbarian knockoff movies. You were born to defeat the Ancient One, the Spider King. You will be able to see that mark, but first, you must prepare yourself. The series is absolutely a source of B-movie gold, including this debut entry from noted sleazemeister Joe D'Amato. The first A-Tour film is, for the most part, a basic Conan retread, though it does include a fight sequence between our titular hero and some menacing shadow warriors. Actually, menacing may not quite be the correct word to describe this scene. Silly might make a bit more sense. Miles O'Keefe does keep a straight face through it all, but yeah, this feels more like a cost-conserving measure than anything creative or exciting. <laughs> Number 19. Nightclub Brawl – Exit Wounds 2001 may seem like sort of late in the game for action star Steven Seagal to enjoy a box office hit, but this co-starring vehicle with rapper DMX was actually well regarded upon release. This is despite the relatively goofy nature of fight scenes such as this one, which takes place in a nightclub. Seagal's co-star Anthony Anderson diffuses any sort of realistic tension with his over-the-top commentary and quips. All the while, brightly colored glass and huge, dangerous dangling chains just feel a lot like plot conveniences. It also all ramps up while the extras just sort of hang around? It's not terrible, but it's definitely not one of Seagal's best. Number 18. A Clean Fight – Black Belt Jones Jim Kelly was always the sort of martial arts film star who never took himself too seriously. As a result, his filmography is full of well-intentioned and super fun films that also happen to feature some serious ass-kicking. Forget it, man. I ain't going in there. It's a fortress. Well, fortress or no, it's top priority. This sequence from Black Belt Jones might be a bit beyond the pale, although you'd never know it given how Kelly sells it all. It occurs at a car wash of all places and feels like 1970s schlocky kung fu madness diluted into its purest essence. You want a funky soundtrack? We got your funky soundtrack. Jim Kelly in short shorts? Glad you asked. Here you go. Oh, and there's also suds. Lots of soap suds. What more could you want, really? <laughs> Number 17. Lurch Kicks It – Night of the Kick Fighters The 1988 film Night of the Kick Fighters features the classic action-slash-espionage plot of let's get the band back together for one last job. All right. Your crew, Brent. How soon can you be ready? We'll be here by 10 tonight and I want a full scope and the layout of those coordinates by then. Still, we have to wonder just what a kick fighter really is exactly. Before we can ever figure it out though, we always just end up distracted by the Adams Family's butler kicking some major butt. That's right. If you thought Ponty looked a little familiar, that's because he's Carl Stricken, the actor who played Lurch throughout the 90s. This fight scene takes place less than five years before Stricken would take on the role, but it feels a million miles away. The sort of Z-grade action that thrived on video store shelves, you know? Makes for some hearty laughs, that's for sure. <laughs> Number 16. Final Fight – Ninja Terminator True connoisseurs of bad bordering on good cinema should know the name of Godfrey Ho. 
This Hong Kong director was the master of cut-and-paste cinema, taking footage from unfinished or obscure films and splicing them together with new footage featuring ninjas or kickboxers. Ho's work is an acquired taste, for sure, but Ninja Terminator might be his most well-known film, thanks to its completely bonkers execution. <laughs> Star Richard Harrison, who was spliced into numerous Ho films without his knowledge, is ready to go in this ninja battle, all complete with stylish eyeliner. Meanwhile, the music stings are completely ridiculous, overshadowing the underwhelming action to an absurd degree. Then, well, it just sort of ends. All right, kill me. Your death will serve no purpose. I've lost face. I can never return to the ninja empire. Number 15. A Man Disarmed deadly prey. The 1980s were a wild and fruitful time for the over-the-top action movie hero, featuring big marquee names like Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and Ted Pryor? Get your men out of here and crawl back into the hole you came out of. You're playing a game that you can't win. What? Do you mean to say that you've never heard of Ted Pryor, star of the 1986 B-movie action classic Deadly Prey? Where else can you find a camouflaged madman doing some unbelievable things with a disembodied arm? Ah! This is a movie that worries not about realism or physics. It's simply here to entertain with as much campy ultraviolence as possible. And it definitely delivers on that front. Go ahead and kill me. Traitor. Number 14. Spooning and Gouging, Samurai Cop The decision to speed up an action sequence can be made for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's simply for sake of style, while other times it's done in order to make the actors in question appear to be more proficient fighters on screen. So they call you Samurai. Let's see how good you are with the sword, Samurai Super Cop. The finale of Samurai Cop is definitely the latter, as actors Matt Hannon and Robert Zadar square off. The choreography features a loving embrace by the pair, some not-so-successful gouging, and a conclusion that attempts some gravitas but doesn't quite stick the landing. That's Samurai Cop in a nutshell. You lost. You lost face. Number 13. Fighting in Reverse. Auti Soya Pira V. Reverse photography is a handy cinema trick filmmakers sometimes use to effectively stage a fight scene. Sometimes it's just a budgetary measure, since not a lot of time is available for multiple setups and takes. As a result, you get scenes like this one in 1999's Atisoya Piravi, an Indian film with fight sequences that, well, they've got gusto. We'll give them that. Our hero definitely seems ready to rock with his cool gloves, dad jeans, and, oh boy, some timeless white sneakers. Then the fighting starts, and it's surprisingly musical. It actually feels more like dancing than fighting, and is impossible to take seriously. Number 12. Slow Motion – Secret Executioners This is probably one of Godfrey Ho's lesser-seen joints from the early 1980s, but it's one that's no less essential for fans of trash cinema. I'm gonna kill you right here! <laughs> we'll see you there, come on! Secret Executioners is barely a film, cobbled together from three disparate sources. But it does feature this less-than-intense fight between two actors whose skills in the martial arts appear completely negligible. It's all a perfect storm of bad dubbing, atrocious clothes, and even worse moves. The sort of kung fu that an average strip mall white belt could probably best. It's clumsy, horribly slow and completely hilarious. So you're black knotted yellow tiger. I'm gonna kill you. If you wanna leave, you still got time, boy. Number 11, Silly Kicks, Death Warrior. Junaid Arkin is a hero of Turkish cult cinema, an honest to goodness tough guy for the common man who appeared in a number of unapologetically sloppy Z movie efforts. <laughs> Death 
Death Warrior still seems to be a cult film waiting for its time in the sun, and we hope that happens soon. Because where else can you find fight scenes like this? <laughs> Seriously, Arkin's screen presence is so badass that his fancy footwork is almost not laughable. It's the sort of 1980s excessiveness bad movie fans live for. Death Warrior revels in the ridiculous while Arkin mugs and prances for the camera with supreme confidence. It's definitely one of a kind. Number 10. Dance Fighting – The Last Airbender if you loved the OG cartoon for its stunning fight scenes, yeah, maybe skip out on this much maligned M. Night Shyamalan adaptation. Why are you acting this way? You are powerful and amazing people. You don't need to live like this. There's Earth right beneath your feet. There's an anticlimactic feeling in the air during the sequence where Aang and the Earthbenders revolt against their firebending oppressors. The music feels epic and the actors are attempting to bring some seriousness to the scene but the group dancing Earthbenders are more silly than fearsome. We're pretty sure Toph called Aang Twinkle Toes, not her own people. The whole thing is oddly slow with what feels like fighters waiting for their cues. Should we even mention the special effects? Oh, the disappointment is so real. The Avatar would have to be an airbender. Are you an airbender boy? <laughs> Leave him alone! Number 9. Neon Ninjas – Ninja Silent Assassin The tagline title of Ninja Silent Assassin makes superb use of Godfrey Ho's penchant for connecting the unconnected movie dots via characters talking into a telephone. And it all leads up to yet another memorably awful final ninja fight. So, you're the Knights of Justice. I'm gonna kill you like I killed your wife. Oh, and there's absolutely no mistaking the fact that these combatants are ninjas, since their neon headbands spell it out in plain text. There's a whole lot of musical swell and climactic build to their final fight, to the point where the audience wonders whether anything is actually going to happen. Well, it does, and it's… not great. It's sub-Power Rangers fodder without the payoff. But you had to know that going into it. Number 8. Miraculous Recoveries – Ricky O, The Story of Ricky It's pretty easy to enjoy 1991's Ricky O, The Story of Ricky on multiple levels. <laughs> on one hand, you can appreciate the amount of ingenuity and skill it took to pull off this film's imaginative special effects. Then again, when the final product is this over the top, you also have to smile and go along for the ridiculous ride. There are miraculous recoveries from straight-up deadly injuries, all of which are gruesome enough you'll just have to watch for yourself. Oh, and did we mention the warden who turns into a giant monster? Yep, Ricky O has it all. <laughs> Number 7. Having a Ball – The Intruder Film industries from Hong Kong, Italy, and Turkey are all rightfully celebrated for their fertile B-movie output, but Indonesia is perhaps a less heralded yet no less impressive source for the same sort of wonderful garbage. I'll give you anything you want. Don't kill me. Don't. Shut up, pig. Get him. The Intruder is an unapologetic knockoff of First Blood, to the point where the main character is named Rambu for crying out loud. Peter O'Brien, action face, is magnificent as ever as he throws punches left, right, and center. Still, it's his magic rubber ball that steals the show, defying gravity and the laws of physics at every turn. Don't mess with Rambo. Just get the hell out of here! Hey, what's the matter, guys? Don't you want to play? I'm a big man around here. You won't get away with this! Number 6. Jim Martial Arts – Jim Cotta you have to admire Olympic gymnast Kurt Thomas for attempting to parlay his natural athletic skill into an action movie acting career, especially when the end results are Jim Cotta. This cult action flick puts the flip into flipping ridiculous, as it explores cliché action tropes with stone-faced seriousness. Who's this? I don't know. His name's Amir. He intends to overthrow the Khan and sell the country to the other side. And he's a viper. 
and your welfare is of no interest to him. It's this sincerity that ultimately works in Jim Cotta's favor, however, especially when Thomas uses a pommel horse during a fight in the village square. The musical soundtrack amps up the gravitas of the sequence, despite the fact that it looks like Thomas is just going through his warm-ups while bad guys fall at his feet. And who put that pommel horse there anyway? Number 5. Thor Kicks Ass Rock and Roll Nightmare No, not that Thor. We're talking about John Michael Thor, the heavy metal rocker turned horror slash action actor with some attitude to spare. Nice effect, Randy. I like that look. Did we say attitude? Let's add ego to that mix too, as Thor preens and prances his way through subpar horror gags and seemingly endless sex scenes until he finds himself squaring off against the big bad. How bad, you might ask? How about the freaking devil? Yep, Thor goes toe to toe with Beezlebub, and it's as ridiculous as you can imagine. An oiled up Thor dodges demonic thingamabobs before duking it out with a puppet Satan in a manner that's tough to take seriously, but easy to love. You win this time. This place is yours. Number 4. That's Mr. To You, Mr. No Legs. The 1978 Mr. No Legs may be low-budget exploitation, but there's nothing exploitative about the story of its star, Ted Volrath. What did you tell him? Well, since the factory's closed today, I told his friend the cop wanted to see him over there right away. Well, what's he going to do when the cop doesn't show up? Oh, well, he'll be there, too. I decided to kill two birds with one stone. The man lost his legs in service to his country during the Korean War, but he didn't let this stop him from earning a black belt and for crusading to help other folks with disabilities learn martial arts. That said, the film banks on the visual of Volrath fighting in and out of his tricked-out wheelchair. The movies seem to know how striking it looks, and Volrath seems game to go above and beyond to shoot fight scenes that may look ridiculous on the surface, but are also profoundly interesting from a film history perspective. <laughs> Number 3. Cheap Cheap – The Room like a bad rash, The Room can't seem to avoid being the topic of nearly every list about bad or so bad they're good films. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! But it's so valid when you've got fight scenes like this one to run alongside overacting, gratuitous sex scenes, and horrible dubbing. Johnny's cheap, cheap, cheap taunts are incredibly silly, while the pushing and grabbing looks like a schoolyard tussle gone horribly wrong. Just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. This is yet another reason why cinemasochists keep returning to the room to get their fix of cringe. Probably won't need another fix for a while, though. All right. Okay, folks, everything is fine. Fight this over, folks. I'm sorry, Mark. Number two. See a Stingray. Undefeatable. This one's a little different from Godfrey Ho's signature stuff. For starters, it's not a cut-and-paste job, and it features certified martial arts legend and badass Cynthia Rothrock in the lead role. What are you guys picking on me for? So I make a little bit of money on the side. Big deal. I have bills to pay. I have a sister in college. Make no mistake, however, Undefeatable is still weird, just not poorly made by Ho's standards, of course. The final fight is particularly memorable thanks to the villainous performance of Don Nyam as Stingray. Nyam's mugging for the camera is kind of iconic, if we're being honest, and his death scene gets quotably cringy quips from both Rothrock and her co-star John Miller. It's eye puns galore as Stingray goes for one painful ride, eye first, on a hook. Keep an eye out for you, Stingray. Yeah, see ya. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Flying Dropkick – Godzilla vs. Megalon Who better to top this list than the king of monsters himself? Godzilla? <laughs> The G-Man made a killing toning down the gravitas of his films for younger audiences back in the 1960s and 70s, with Godzilla vs. Megalon featuring one particularly memorable moment. Godzilla and the size-changing robot Jet Jaguar take on the team of Megalon and Gigan, 
and decide to go all WWE on them. Godzilla gets so excited that he does a flying dropkick as a special attack. So excited it seems that he does it twice. Honestly, we could watch this on a loop all day. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.